Wildcats visited the swamp one day to play football and eat gator souffle. The fans of Orange, to their dismay, the streak they held slipped away. This is Beatty Lee London, UK superfan, and we're at the Woodford Reserve Club here at Kroger Stadium. We have the Fayette County UK alumni game watch party for the men's basketball game versus the Auburn Tigers. Now, what's special about this game watch party, it's also a scholarship fundraiser for incoming freshmen. So we're setting up right now, join us. We're gonna have a great time, and by the way, we're undefeated at game watches. I'd like to say thank you to the Wilford Reserve Distillery for donating bottles of their double oat to our raffle to raise money for scholarships. Appreciate the love from Kathleen and Katie. All right, we don't think anybody else is here. Okay. No, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you. Jack will take it. Okay, thank you. Yes. We have with us Big George, offensive tackle for the legendary 2018-2019 Citrus Bowl champions. Let's give a round of applause for Big George, Asafa Ajay. With him is wide receiver number 33, David Bouvier. How you guys feeling today? Good. So, Big George, I want you to talk a little bit about your major. Now, and I also know that you aspire, if you didn't play in the NFL, you'd love to coach kids. So, tell everybody what your major is and uh, some of your dreams and goals. Yeah, so my major is uh, community leadership and development. And uh, basically, that, you know, entails uh, helping the community going back out, you know, finding ways to almost get the community on the same page, get okay. the community together. Because, you know, in this day and age, you know, we're, we're very independent as people and, you know, maybe we lose that, that, that sense of community and, you know, um, building that trust amongst community members and stuff like that. So, you know, that's what I want to do, you know. My way of bringing that in is uh, coaching kids, training kids, and, um, you know, I just know that that helped me as a kid, you know, to stay out of trouble, you know. Um, stay healthy and uh, I want to pass that on to other kids, so, yeah. Thank you. Mike Smith, tell me something that you learned under Coach Smith. Uh, he, he taught me a lot. Uh, he taught me to believe in myself. Uh, I didn't play too much before this season. And uh, before the season started, he told me that I was this guy who was going to give me a chance. And, uh, you know, he just, he just let me play. And, All right, great. Now, we know that the Citrus Bowl came with a lot of perks. Big George, why don't you share with some of the things that you got from the Citrus Bowl? Uh, yeah, it definitely came with perks. Uh, I got a TV, a camera, and uh, What kind of TV, man? It was a, uh, it, it was a little 48-inch TV. Okay, then, uh, okay. A nice, a nice $200 camera. What, what brand name was the camera? 
Um, I don't even know. I'm not, I'm not that big into cameras, but I know my mom likes cameras. Yeah, so yeah. Nice oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. A cool, nice little gift. I know Adrian Middleton, he's big into like digital media. I think that was like his minor. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that, yeah. I'd like to welcome Peggy Queen. She's the president of the Fayette County UK Alumni Club who's hosting this wonderful party. Peggy, thank you for coming to the oh, Game Watch. Yeah, thank you, everybody for coming. Now, one of the things we do, we raise money for scholarships, and we were blessed to partner with a wonderful distillery. It's located on Manchester Street called Barrel House Distillery. I'd like to welcome Dr. Pete Wright and Jeff Wiseman up to the stage. They have a presentation that they'd like to give to Peggy. OK, so for the sale of our bourbon, which we're auctioning off or raffling off a bottle that's signed by Coach Stoops and Calipari, donations were made to the Fayette County UK, UK Alumni Scholarship Fund. So we want to present this check to our president from Barrel House Distillery. For, oh for contributing to our scholarship fund. So round of applause for Barrel House Distillery. Yay! <laughs> I can't shake. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> Thank you so much, we'll guys. Thanks, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Y'all, this has been incredible, really. We're going to keep I mean, that's yeah. amazing. Glad to do it. Thank we you. appreciate well, it. Well, baby's home yeah. is that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the winning ticket number is 60. All right, this is for the John Calipari signed bottle of Wildcat Love Bourbon, also distilled at Barrel House Distillery. All right. And the winner is Chuck Ellinger. 6287900. Chuck, come on down. All right, Chuck. Your city councilman. Here, why don't you go ahead and re it? Give it to me. You okay. sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Chuck has such a big heart, he said, put it back in the raffle. So that's how you pay it for it right there. We'll do that, Chuck. Thank you, sir. All right. Cats, cats, cats. Oh, C-A-T-S, cats, cats, cats. This raffle is also sponsored by Direct Energy, which is one of our event sponsors. Direct Energy provides natural gas supply to larger industrial consumers like U.S. Steel. Also commercial consumers like Bluegrass Airport and Cincinnati Airport. All right, and I got my main man, Tanner. Step to the stage. Step to the stage. We're gonna have my homeboy Tanner. He's good luck. He's gonna pull out. Oh, we got more tickets. Okay, okay. Make sure we get some tickets. Hang on here. All right. Don't want everyone to lose out. Give, give it a last call. See if anyone else wants any. All right. All right. Shake them up. Okay. Mix those up for me, Tanner. Mix those up big time for me. Keep mixing, keep mixing. All right, this is for our Alumni Hall gift card. And the winner is Tanner, please. All right, the winning number is 6287953. I believe this is Janice. Janice? Yay, come on up, Janice. You just won. Tanner, will you hand her this, please, buddy? I want you to walk on that side of the stage and hand that to her. And watch your step when you're coming back, okay? Just watch that. Perfect. Thank you, Janice. All right, we're going to have David come up. This is for another bottle of the Double Oak Woodford Reserve. All right, the Double Oak Woodford Reserve goes to with... Winning ticket number 6287869.
Looks like um, Eric Porter. Did I get that right? <coughs> Is it Eric Porter? All right, Eric Porter, come on down. I see him, I see him. $90 gift certificate to Warby Parker. Big George, can you pick the winner, please? And the winner is, with ticket number 62878822, Michael McCaskey. Come on down for your gift certificate. Our special guest is about to head out, so I'd like to give a round of applause for Big George and David Bouvier. I'm going to let them end it. They can share a special moment with their career at UK and say what they want. Big George? All right. Um, so my special moment uh, would definitely be the whole Citrus Bowl experience. Um, what was special to me was our bus pulled up to the stadium, and there was, I know there was about 400 fans out there in the catwalk, and that was, uh, that was really special, especially in a game like that with that atmosphere. The Big Blue Nation definitely showed up, and I love that. And uh, I appreciate all y'all and everyone that supported. And I'll always remember. All right, Dick. Yeah, my special moment was uh, the Florida game, um, getting out and scoring that opening touchdown. Nice. Yeah, that was a dream come true. I'm from Lexington, and uh, being a part of this team, this 10 win team, was, was amazing. I grew up, I see the tickets. Uh, Watched a lot of seasons and uh, to be a part of it has just been really special and the support that we have from the BBN has been awesome this year and I can't thank you all enough. Uh, so thanks for coming out and go Cats. Appreciate it guys. Yeah, thanks thank you. so much yeah. man. Yeah, I'll be getting past that with right, you. Yeah, for sure. So you just witnessed the UK men's basketball team defeating Auburn at the Fayette County UK Alumni Scholarship Fundraiser. We had a wonderful time this evening at the Game Watch. And we are going to have another segment with Big George Asafa Ajay and David Bouvier. And we're going to have this segment over dinner and we're going to talk to them about their early football career. Again, I'd like to say a special thank you to all the millions of UK fans out there watching and supporting Wildcat Love TV on ABC 36, WTVQ. Welcome to another wonderful edition of Wildcat Love TV. I have some special guests with me today, wide receiver David Bouvier and offensive tackle Georgia Safa Ajay. All right, guys, you doing all right? Good. Appreciate you guys coming out, having a little grub with me, and just sharing a nice little conversation, all right? All right, so the letter that you just read, Okay, so it's a letter. I gave it to one of the coaches. I'm not going to say who it was. And uh, it was before the Vandy game. And I was just, I was like, coach, you know, this is just a letter from a fan. And I was hoping that he would share it with you guys. And I, I mean, obviously you guys hadn't read that before. Um, you know, he didn't end up sharing it. To be honest with you, when he was reading it, he started turning pale and he was shaking a little bit. I could tell he was a little bit nervous. And I was just like, look, it's just a letter from a fan, yeah. you know. And, you know, for whatever reason, he, he ended up not sharing it. But uh, so what I want to ask you guys, at the beginning of the season, how did Coach Stoops go about talking about the team goals? I'll let you start, George, and then you can reiterate, Dave. Um, definitely he, uh, he had the uh, leaders. So we all met and we discussed, you know, what are our expectations for our team? Okay. Number one, and then, you know, what are our goals for the, you know, 
the whole season. All right. So us leaders, we, we came up with our expectations, you know, as far as workouts, school, you know, practice, and then, you know, our goals, which are, you know, win this many games, you know, boom, boom, do this. And, you know, we came together and, you know, we addressed the team and it was a, it was a players only meeting. Okay. We addressed the team and we said, look, this is what we're going to do. You, you gotta follow this or you ain't gonna be here. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, Pat's bought in, you know, it's, we'll see the turn the turnout. So. Alright, Dave, what was just give me like uh one of the expectations. Give me one of the expectations or what what did you determine like was a team goal as far as wins go? Sure, yeah. Uh, George was saying we thought it was called the uh, Unity Council. The Unity Council. Yeah, we had uh, seniors and a bunch of the leaders on the team. We okay. all got together and gotcha. we needed to have some concrete goals yeah. that we need to meet and that everyone on the team needs to meet and just have some standards. Uh, because, you know, we've been you know on the cusp. We've been, like, you know, pushing, like, seven wins. No doubt. Wins no doubt. Every year. We just haven't gotten over the hump. And we kind of set out some goals. We were like, all right, we need to do uh, this in the weight room. We need to be at every practice. There's no misses, no tutor misses, no class misses. And, you know, this team is just special because just everyone kind of bought into it and it, and it showed on the field. Okay. That's good to hear. So, all right, one of my favorite uh, things was the catwalk. All right. Now, did I'm not sure if y'all ever saw me. Did George, did you ever see me at the catwalk? He's got his headphones. Okay. Okay. So, I'm, I'm I hey, I understand, I and that's, that's and that's gonna that's yeah. gonna be one of my next questions, kind of like your pregame routine. But one of the things I like to do with the catwalk is I'd like to I read the body language, you know. I, I like to read the body language, and I like to see consistency. Okay. So, for instance, you said you have your headphones on. Like, I like to see does he do that to, every time? You know, every time. Because there's sometimes, there's some players that I would see one game interact with the crowd, and then the next game, they almost purposely wouldn't interact with the crowd. So I would be like, hmm, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now, Dave, you saw me at the catwalk. Yeah. So, George, one of the things I held up at the catwalk every time I was there was my state of a champion, okay? Now, I gave you an idea of kind of what I meant by that in that letter. You know, there were some fans... There's some UK fans that, no matter how good you are, they say things like, well, even though we're undefeated, we still can't beat Alabama. Or they don't feel like UK would ever win a national championship, okay? And, and from my perspective, like, it kind of hurts a little bit because if you're a true fan, don't speak that into existence. Right, right. That's how I feel, you know? So I... There were I heard some UK fans say, you know, if we make it to the SEC championship, we should just be happy to be there. But imagine if the leaders came into the locker room and was like, guys, I know we undefeated right now, but we're not going to beat Alabama. Right. Or, you know, if we make it to the SEC championship, let's just be happy to be there. Right. You can't have that mind state. To me, that's like the mind state of a runner-up. Would you agree? Right. Yeah. So, oh, Bouvier, for instance, man, I... I don't care about your size, I care about the size of your heart. You know, there's a place for you in the NFL if you believe it, you know what I'm saying? Same thing, George, I don't care about where you project it, I care about where you project yourself, you right, feel me? Right, right. Things that are worth your time are challenging, you know, they're gonna challenge you a little bit. So, I kinda wanted to just like share that letter with you, you guys, like I said, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali, I thought that was kind of special, you know, came to a game to, to the stadium one time, you know. And, and one of the things that he stood for, he wanted everybody to feel like a champion, you know. So, you know, you, you won't win every game, but at the same time, if you have that mind state, you can do great things. Okay, so that was, that was my point of sharing that letter with you guys. Now, uh, I want to talk about the Tennessee game, okay. I had a chance to sit with some boosters that rode like the buses with you guys. Okay. Um, and they talked about some of the team's body language rolling into the stadium. You speak for yourself. How did you feel before that game? I mean, honestly, I mean, I felt like we were, you know, if, if there was anything I noticed, maybe too loose, you know, you know, we, 
we were kind of like, yeah, we're going to come in and do what we need to do, whatever. Like, you know, it wasn't that ultimate focus, maybe. Okay. Like, other than that, I mean, we came to do what we needed to do, but, you know. It doesn't always work out. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't always work out. Work out but I will, I will say maybe it was a little loose, you know. Mm-hmm. That's how it is sometimes, right? What about you, Day? Yeah, I felt like we had a, a great game plan put together and everything. You know, it's kind of getting towards the end of the SEC, so a lot of guys are banged up. We never like to make excuses, but, you know, a lot of guys were hurting out there, and they just they came out to play that day, and we, you know, we just kind of laid an egg. We just, just didn't have it like we had in previous games, so... It kind of woke us up, and I think it propelled us into, you know, winning the Citrus Bowl because we never wanted to feel that feeling again. I hear you. I hear you. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the recruiting process, George. Um, not sure when you knew, but talk a little bit about how UK recruited you and kind of when you made your decision, whether it was your junior or senior year. Yeah. Just just speak on it. All right, so um, I actually got my first offer in my junior year. That's okay. when I first started, like, I started and then, um, you know, I, I, how I learned the game was I'd watch other, you know, high recruits and I'd just try to imitate how they were playing. Cause, of course, of course. You know, I, re- I didn't start playing football until, you know, years before that. Okay. So, you know, it was, it was all new still. And, um, you know, I was just learning and basically, um, you know, I guess I was, <laughs> you know, doing what I was supposed to do. Who and, contacted you? Uh, UK was the first school to offer me. But who was it? Who was Coach Merrill? Coach Merrill. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Great. Great. Yeah, Coach Merrill, he came to the school and you know he said what's up. You know, came to watch the game. What was your first impression of Coach Merrill? I mean, he was a cool dude. Like just from the job, I knew he was cool. Yeah. You know, and um, like they believed in me and they they continuously recruited me. It wasn't like a you know here's your offer and you don't hear back from me. Yeah. They, they were on me. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's how I do push to the and, you know, it's a blessing. Yeah. I came here. Now, when did you make your decision? Because they, they approached you your junior year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it, um, it was the summer before my senior year. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, like, June, June something. Yeah, how, how did it feel to go ahead and, and get that out the way so you oh, could yeah. have it? It, was, it felt good just because I don't, I don't really like the recruiting process. Okay. Yeah, it was just too much, too a little stressful? Calling. I was stressful. I just didn't like too much calling and, you know, yeah. trying to entertain. Like, I don't know. It was just too much for me, so I, I was happy to get that over. Okay. Okay. Good to hear. All right, Dave, listen. So how did it go for you as far as the recruiting process? Yeah, so I wasn't getting as many phone calls as George was. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't have a, I didn't have any D1 offers. I was a... Uh, it came down to basically between uh, Butler University uh-huh. in Indianapolis okay. and then uh, Center College in Danville. My sister went there and uh, had some friends there, and it was it was close. And then uh, Neil Brown came in last second to came to my high school, yeah. Lexington Catholic, and he was like, "Hey, there's a spot on the team if you want to be a preferred walk-on." And I was like, right there, I was like, "Yeah, that sounds great." So <laughs> when that, now what was that your senior year? It was my senior year. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah, I was. Trying to decide last second between those two schools, and then you know Brown came in like it was like February. Wow. So I mean, yeah, it was very last last second. Okay. Okay. Man, that's hey, that's a blessing though. That's a blessing. And um, you know, family life. You know, with my mom, my sister, and uh, my nephew. Okay. Yeah, and um. Now, did you always grow up in Cincinnati? No, I mean, I was from the Bronx, and then we moved there when I was eight. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we, we lived in the Bronx at first, and then recent, uh, recently my sister came here from Ghana. Okay, okay. Yeah, she came in 2014, but so I didn't know. I, I didn't see my sister my whole life until I was, like, 14. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, that, that was something, and then, uh, you know. She she came here with a baby, my nephew Mitch, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, it's been it's been good ever since. Yeah, I guess uh, she's kind of my uh, church league. I think that's where I started. Just playing flag football. All right, all right. Yeah, just uh, that's what my friends were doing, so that's what I was doing. Started about first grade, playing flag football. Okay. And then uh, just kind of always went through the the Catholic school system from there and played for the. Uh, Lexington Catholic middle school team just kind of fed right into Lexington Catholic so 
wasn't jumping around too much and my parents aren't the biggest sports people I don't even I think my mom played tennis a little bit in high school but <laughs> but I was uh, they never you know pressured me to play in sports they were never the parents to be yelling or anything they just were always just happy to be there yeah yeah and I got a I have a sister who uh, is a lawyer and uh, she's she's 30 32 and my brother is 41, he, and he lives up in Louisville. So you're the youngest? I'm the youngest, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Doing great, sir. Doing great. Thank you, sir. Looks wonderful. Thank you, Chris. No, I think we're good, brother. Yes, sir. All right, so I'm going to shout out my mom, my sister, my uh, nephew. I'm going to shout out my girl, of course. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to shout out the coaches. Um, and, you know, definitely Coach Slarman. You know, I know he's battling right now. Definitely huge shout out to you. And I, I pray everything's going good. And um, shout out to all my friends out here in uh, Cincinnati. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time. All right, first and foremost, shout out my mom. Thank you for everything that you do. And uh, shout out the coaches, Coach Smith, Coach Grant. Thank you for giving me a chance, Coach Stoops. And uh, shout out to my girlfriend. Appreciate you. All right, so I want to give a shout out to the millions and millions of the Big Blue Nation tuning in to Wildcat Love TV. I want to thank my guest, David Bouvier, Big Georgia Safa IJ. Shout out to my mom who gave me a great foundation, my beautiful wife, Rosalyn, uh, my stepson, Jordan, all my peoples back in Lexington, UK alumni, I can't forget you all, all the blessings that you all have helped me with. And, Thank you for tuning in. We're about to enjoy, oh, Creative Visions. My man Rob Morton handling all the production. Can't forget him. So we're about to enjoy this meal. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Wildcat Love TV. I'd like to say a special thank you to Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse, who will be opening a restaurant in downtown Lexington in April of 2019. What's in your heart? What's in your heart, Kentucky? My state of a champion. What's in your heart, Kentucky? What's in your heart? What's in your heart, Kentucky?